it's a beautiful sunny day here at the Midwest LSA Expo. And yes, we're looking rather pink today, but we are looking at an airplane that we've never actually reviewed on video before. It's been around since, a, well, a long time. This is Quicksilver's Sprint. Wire braced, single seat, single surface. What's called single surface anyway, meaning these tubes out here show they're not buried inside the wing like the sport model is. And we've got somebody who has one of these things and he has got it from what I could tell all tricked out. Meet Jason Pearson and I'm Dan Johnson and we're gonna look about this airplane a little bit. But first, the Sprint is a beautiful single place part 103 capable airplane. Depends on how much power you got and how much stuff you got on it, whether it really meets 103 or not. But this is one of the lightest aircraft in the airspace and it can stall. When I last flew it, I was able to see a stall of 18 or 19 miles an hour. Yeah, that's correct, Dan. I mean, it's like almost walking speed. Yeah. But Jason, you've got, I, you, you said before he sat down and got in the airplane, he said, well, let me set the park and brake. And he reached back here to a neat little component. He's got a parking brake on a Sprint. Now, I don't think I've ever seen that before. But what all did you do to this airplane well, to it, add features to it? Dan, Jason. this this started out as a, a 92 Sprint. and uh, 1992 this yeah, is? 1992. Gosh, it looks... I, I, would, I would have thought you just built this. It well, really looks almost new. I bought it 10 years ago, and uh, I bought it used on the second owner. And at that time, I, I flew it for about three months, and then the beginning of that winter, I took it completely down into kit form, and laid it all out in the floor of my hangar. Wow, and right down all the bolts and everything? Exactly, I laid it all down, the, all the right wing ribs, all the left wing battens, you know, the root tube, everything laid out just like a kit. <laughs> and then went and reassembled the, 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 whole, the whole plane. And uh, I know every nut and bolt in it uh, has been changed. It's all been upgraded. Um, I've got, uh, I took away with the uh, the pull pull cables, and I've got a push pull tube going okay, yeah, going see, directly out to the. I see you've got it in. Oh, it's a little hard to tell here under the pink, but looks like it's Quicksilver blue. Yeah, it's Quicksilver all blue. All Quicksilvers use blue anodized tubing. It's all Quicksilver blue, and uh, so wiggle the stick for us here if you can get that on yeah. your camera, Dave. You don't often see a. In fact, I've never seen a push pull tube. You can see how much it's moving there. I'm not moving huh. my hand. So not much motion. Not that much. would give that a real nice solid feel. Yeah. Uh, I love cable bracing, mm -hmm. and I like cable controls, but there's sometimes a little bit of slop in A little it. bit, you know, and this takes it all out. And, and all the fork bolts that are normally in all the hinges, I replace with all ball joints, ball hinge joints, uh, and all of the, uh, the, the pivot points in the airplane. Now, are you a mechanical guy that you would even tackle a project like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've grown up building model airplanes, and, okay. and uh, I'm crew chief for Dan Buchanan Air Shows right now. Oh, are you? Moment. Okay. So, uh, me we and know Dan, and love Dan. He's yeah. a great uh, performer. So, uh, um, I've, I've been around aviation for a long time. I always, always liked the grassroots elements of ultralight flying and the hands-on, being out there in the open. It's not about going fast. and and uh, being fancy for me, it's about being out in the open and being uh, grassroots about it. <laughs> You're right down in the grass, literally. Yes, in yes this. literally down. And uh, Jason, I hate to mention this, but <laughs> you're. A little big? Yeah, I'm a big guy. I uh, outweigh the airplane by about 60 pounds, so I'm not I'm not no little guy. But the airplane doesn't know any different. It's it flies. It'll take me in and out of any strip that I want to, and and it's hauled me all over Southern Illinois, up to Springfield, uh, Indiana, Kentucky. Uh, I've gone some pretty You've ranged around pretty well in this solo flying airplane. Now, what when you're doing those kind of flights, what's the what's the max you can cruise at? 42 miles an hour. 42 miles yep. an hour. And that's, that's and is that you find that a problem? Out. Only 42? Not at all. <laughs> I knew you were going to answer that. Not at all. It's it's you, you turn on your uh, MP3 player and you sit back and just enjoy the scenery and, and kind of drifts by. Exactly. Yeah. You just uh, about an hour or so, you get into the airport, you tune in your little air, you know airport, and you start hollering in and grab the stick and start flying again. <laughs> now I see you got over here on uh, to Jason's right. He's got his. Um, I don't know what brand it is. Uh, I got oh, it's a, an ICOM, okay. Yeah, I got an Good ICOM system. A22. Uh, so there's your communication. So you can uh, talk to Towers or whoever you got to talk to or just announce you're coming into it on a control field. Mm -hmm. Then you got a, a Magellan GPS here right uh, alongside yep. you. And that'll just, in case I get lost or if I'm going on a long trip, I'll just punch it up. Mostly just tell me what my ground speed is. And, and what do you got over here in this little box? Uh, I got an RPM and a CHT. So some engine instruments, yeah, just basically. A couple. Mm -hmm. 
So I see my favorite of all instruments here, or at least the holder for my favorite of all instruments. This thing here holds a Hall wind speed meter, which is literally the only instrument I had the last time I flew a Sprint. That's how I knew it stalled at 18 or 19 miles an hour. But you don't have the Hall. What's that uh, about? No, sir. It's a. Uh... It's now my uh, toilet paper holder. I can hold two toilet paper two, two rolls on here, and you just drop got one roll. You've got an in-flight bathroom? No, uh, that's no, not it. Nope, so. I just dropped my paperwork off. That's uh, drop one, and then I can just drop two. And Now, from, I know this trick that you're talking about, because I've done it, and it is quite fun. But why would you want to drop a roll of toilet paper from an airplane? It gives you something to chase down on the way down, Dan. <laughs> from so the, uh, from the ticket here is you roll it off and you gotta you gotta you gotta make sure it starts unraveling right, right and it'll make a big long streamer and you can turn around cut through this thing which you know toilet paper weighs nothing it doesn't right. hurt anything and when it gets to the ground it's just all going to dissolve just like it does in that other place you use exactly it, so. from 1500 feet i can cut uh, five six times no kidding wow i tried that once i wasn't nearly that good at it you got a nickname for all of that? I'm the paper cutter, I the guess. Paper yeah. cutter. <laughs> this, this, this plane is very maneuverable. Um, the, the well, and the fact that you can turn around, that's what you're saying, it, yes. you can turn around so quick and get back at it. Right. The one I flew, I had to kind of go away, so I couldn't get it as many times. But It's really pretty cool to run into something deliberately in the air. You wouldn't try that on many airplanes. With the Quicksilver Sprint, good to go. Yeah. So let's go back uh, a few moments ago in our conversation. You said you took it all down to every last bolt. That's real admirable. If you're going to go out and buy an airplane, that's really like one of the best things you could do. Not only do you learn a lot, as you said, but you're going to know the quality of every component of it. All right, now you got it all laid out all over your floor. How long did it take you to get it back together? It took about three and a half months, and that's not steady work. You know, it's just on the weekends and a couple hours at night, you know, after work. Um, it took uh, about three and a half months. The, the, all the, the whole sale is a custom-made sale. Um, is it? You had the, you had new sales done? Yeah, I had, I had new sales done. Yeah, because they look time. real fresh and good. There yeah. is a way of testing these. These are Dacron sales. This is not doping fabric. This is like a sailboat sail. And they're sewn together. You can see the lines of stitching on here for those that don't know that kind of aircraft. It's a very durable and good surface. It makes a great wing, but it is subject to sunlight it degradation. Is. And so you need to punch test them with a certain instrument periodically. You put new ones on it just to solve that problem. Exactly, and then I got a custom made rudder too. I've got Snoopy on the tail. Just ah, to, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm known as Snoopy. Very cool, what engine are you running here? It's a Rotex 447. 447, yeah. old, good old 447, single horse, carb I see. Single carb, pull, pull starter. Uh, I painted the shroud just to match the, the airplane. Uh, got the big man, he-man bar on here that I painted, big C. Why did you put the big he-man bar on? Well, I'm a big guy. <laughs> I got the big seat. It's real comfortable. It's not very often that we run into a pilot who weighs more than his airplane. It's very. And that's not even a statement about you. It's mainly a statement about how light this airplane is. It is a very light airplane. You can stand out on one on one wingtip and with one arm just pick the airplane up on one wheel. No it, problem. It, you know, no problem. You really have to watch the weather also. Keep it tied down. A, a strong thermal coming through the ramp will pick the airplane up and put it up on end. Well, it wants to fly right away. Exactly. We already discussed that. If it stalls at 18, it means it wants to fly at 18. Um, but, but this is one like, of the, the strongest airplanes that I that I ever uh, flown or know about. Yet. It is very strong. Uh, even with my weight, I'll go up and I'll spin it and I'll I'll split S it, uh, all kinds of stuff. And and I'm not really loading the airplane up very much. It's just uh, it, it'll handle it. The, well, the if you point this thing into a straight strong. nose down dive and go as fast as you can, you're still only going to go. What, 50, 55 exactly. miles an hour There's like that. There's so much drag with the wires. You just can't really hit its limits. Right. And and these things, they, they may look kind of thin and spindly. We all know what steel cables like, pretty strong stuff, but is it really strong enough to hold an airplane? Absolutely. In fact, you can get rid of a couple of these and it'll still stay together. Just Jim, Jim Hanbury proved that. Jim Hanbury proved it. Cut several of these yes. until he had one left. And even then he had to shake and horse around the airplane to make it fail. He was up there to do a parachute test. We don't advise anyone to do that at home, uh, but it does show just how strong this is. This is for redundancy. Not all of these are even needed. Well, Jason, this is really cool. Uh, you've owned this airplane now how long? Yourself? 10 years. 10 years? Yep. I hope you get uh, another 10 or 20 years out of it. I'll bet you can. I do too. Hey, thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And yes, I have a pilot report on this one. It was one of my great pleasures several years ago. And I think every airplane Quicksilver makes, and you can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.